Hi, in the previous video, we talked about deadlock prevention. Let us now talk about deadlock avoidance. How can we avoid deadlock? In the summary video, we discussed that deadlock avoidance means whenever a process requests for some resources, your operating system checks whether granting these resources would lead to deadlock or not. If it might lead to deadlock, your operating system would not grant these resources. So that's the simple idea of deadlock avoidance. So here I have drawn a scenario where we have two resources R0 and R1 and there are these processes which are currently there in the system P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. These processes are currently holding these many instances of the resources. P0 is holding zero instances of R0 and one instance of R1. P1 is holding two instances of R0 and zero instances of R1. So that's the allocation part, currently allocated resources. And these processes have also declared their maximum need. And these processes have also declared their maximum need. P0 has declared that it's never going to take more than seven instances of R0 and five instances of R1. P1 has declared that it will never take more than three instances of R0 and two instances of R1. Here we are making an assumption that every process declares its maximum need. It might not be possible practically, right? But this is the assumption on which this deadlock avoidance works. This banker's algorithm for deadlock avoidance works. So we have this maximum need of every process we have allocated and we know that how many total instances are there of every resource. Say there are 10 instances of R0 and 5 instances of R1. Now say that P3 requests for 1 instance of R0 and 0 instance of R1. Should operating system grant this request or not? That's the problem we are trying to solve here. So we have a scenario where currently some resources are allocated and we know the maximum need of every process. We know the total number of resources available to us and we have a request coming for the operating system, one zero. Now operating system needs to run some algorithm to decide whether it should grant this request or should ask this process to wait. So we are solving the problem that P3 is requesting one zero in this situation. Should P3 be allocated these resources or not? So there are basic checks your operating system would obviously do. It will check whether this one zero is not more than maximum. It has already taken one one and now it is asking for one zero. So its total allocation is going to be two one. This two one is less than two two. So no problem here. If there is a problem here, your OS will generate an error. Now the second check for the operating system is do I have these many resources for now? So how many resources your operating system has for now? So the, you have some available matrix. So you have an available array for this and this available array tells you how many resources are available. So how many resources are there in total? 10 and 5. And how many resources are allocated? 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, 6, 10 minus 6, 4. 4 resources four instances of R0. And how many instances of R1? 1 plus 1, 2, 5 minus 2, 3. So these many instances are currently available in the system. So the process is requesting for 1, 0 and 4, 3 is available. So no problem here as well. So it would not generate any error. Suppose it was requesting for something which was within the max limit but greater than this, then also operating system would not allocate these resources. It will ask the process to wait. So first two checks are passed for this request, right? Now come the main part of this algorithm. The main part is your operating system assumes that these resources are allocated. Then it checks if I allocate these resources, what will happen? Do I have a safe state after allocation or not? So I'll talk about safe state just after some time. So your operating system assumes that these resources are allocated. So new allocation becomes 2, 1 and available resources become 
because I've allocated one more. So I have a label reduces, we have three, three. So now this is the new state. The resources are not granted yet. It assumes that resources are granted. Then it runs an algorithm, finds out if this allocation would lead to a safe state or not. If it does not lead to a safe state, then this request is not granted, right? And now, how does this algorithm find out that this system is in safe state or not? So for that, it generates a safe sequence. And if a safe sequence can be generated, then it's in safe state. If a safe sequence cannot be generated, then it's not in safe state. Now, what is a safe sequence? A safe sequence is permutation of these processes. Say any permutation I'm drawing here, we'll figure out what is what is exact safe sequence for this. I'm just drawing some random permutation here, right? So what safe sequence is? If this is a safe sequence, then I can finish these processes in serial order one by one. I assume that P2 is finished and whatever resources were allocated to P2 are available now. Then P3 can finish, then P4 can finish. So if P0 is here in the same safe sequence, then I can assume that all the resources taken by these three are released and P0 has all these resources and the resources which are currently available. So P0 can now finish the work. So that's the idea of safe state. If you have a serial execution of processes, which can happen one after the other, then this is a safe state. Now let's talk about the algorithm to find out the safe state. To find out if a safe sequence exists or not, the first thing we do is we build this need matrix. How do we build this need matrix? It's simple. We simply subtract allocated from the max. So I subtract 0, 1 from 7, 5, I get 7, 4. I subtract 2, 0 from 3, 2, I get 1, 2. Similarly, I get other entries of this need matrix. Once I have computed the need matrix, I run this algorithm. And this algorithm says that you initialize the safe sequence as empty. Then you run a loop while all processes are not added to the safe sequence. So what you do is you first find out a process whose need is smaller than or equal to available. If you do not find such a process, then this safe sequence is not possible with current configuration. So we return false. What it means? This request would not be granted. Otherwise, if we find such a process, we add this processes allocated to available and add this process to safe sequence. Now let's run this algorithm one by one. So we need to find a process whose need is smaller than available. Let's check if P0 is satisfying the criteria. P0's need is 7, 4 and available is 3, 3. It's not satisfying the criteria because its need is more than available. P1, its need is 1, 2 and available is 3, 3. So this satisfies the criteria. So we update available as current available 3, 3 plus allocated of P1. So we get available as 3 plus 2, 5. 3 plus 0, 3. So our available now becomes 5, 3. And P1 is added to the safe sequence. So now your safe sequence contains P1. Now we again iterate through the loop and we find a process whose need is smaller than available. So let's say uh, we have now P2. P2's is need is 6, 0 and available is 5, 3. So P2 is not such a process. We keep searching. We find P3. P3's need is 0, 1 and available is 5, 3. Yes, P3 is the one. So we add allocated of P3 to the current available. So our available becomes 5 plus 2, 7, 1 plus 3, 4. And our safe sequence becomes P1, P3. This is our new safe sequence. Now we again do search for a process whose need is smaller than available. 4, 3 is the process, right? I mean, P4 is the process whose need is 4, 3 and available is 7, 4. So we update available. We add this allocated to 7, 4. So 0, 0 is added. So we have 7, 4. Now we add P4 to the safe sequence. So we have P1, P3, P4 in the safe sequence now. But we are not done with all the processes, right? 
So we stop this loop when all the processes are added to the safe sequence because there are still some processes which are not yet added. So we continue our search. Let's say we now come to P0. So P0 needs 74 and we have 74 now. So we add P0 to the safe sequence and we update available. So available now becomes 74 plus 01. So it becomes 75. And P0 is added to the safe sequence. Now we still do not have all the process in the safe sequence. So we have only P2 left. P2's need is 60 and available is 75. So P2 can also be added to the safe sequence. So we got all process in the safe sequence. So the request for this can be granted. Let's finish the final step. So available now becomes, although this is not necessary because there is no process left after this, 30 plus 75, 10.5 and we have the safe sequence as P1, P3, P4, P0 and P2. This is P0. Right. So we have our safe sequence. Since we have our safe sequence, we grant this request of 10 to the process P3. So that is what is done in deadlock avoidance. Whenever a process requests for some resources, you check whether this process is making a legitimate request. I mean, it is not asking for the max that it declared. If it is fine, then we check if it is not greater than the current available. If it is not greater than the current available, then also it is fine. After that, we run this algorithm to check if allocating this resource would lead to a deadlock or not. So this algorithm runs after assuming that this resource is allocated to the process and then it checks whether after allocation we would end up with a deadlock or not. In this video, we talked about deadlock avoidance. We talked about the banker's algorithm which was developed by Dijkstra. It's the only algorithm for deadlock avoidance. There are many limitations of this algorithm which make it impractical. One is this algorithm assumes that every process knows in advance what is going to be its maximum need, which is impractical many times. Also, this process, also this algorithm assumes that once a process is done, it will release all the sources. So what might happen is there are long running processes and they do not release the resource, right? So some other processes might have to wait for hours, which is also impractical. So this algorithm is more theoretical than practically used. We are going to talk about this algorithm in deadlock detection and recovery also. It is used in deadlock detection as well. One last point about this safe sequence and safety. Please remember your system can be in two states, safe and unsafe. So there is an unsafe state and there is a safe state. So when your system is in unsafe state, it does not mean that deadlock is going to happen for sure, right? So there is a subset of this unsafe state which may cause deadlock. Because what we did was we assumed when we were running this safety algorithm, we assume that we are going to allocate the need which was the maximum need and then we were checking whether this generates a safe sequence or not but this maximum need might not be demanded one by one for all the by all the processes so this unsafe is a superset of deadlock but we took extra precaution to check if there is no safe sequence we do not grant this request